Imagine a place set in the mystical landscape of northern New Mexico, where writers, artists, and musicians could come together, share ideas, and exchange their creative processes with each other in a wider community. A place where students could go and learn from the masters of these disciplines while getting back in touch with nature and all that nature has to offer. Now realize that this place already exists. A place where one of the most important and influential writers of the 20th century lived and is now interned in the walls of a beautiful chapel. I think New Mexico was the greatest experience I ever had from the outside world. It certainly changed me forever. Bequeathed to the University of New Mexico by Frida Lawrence in 1955, the D.H. Lawrence Ranch has had a colorful history, but was never fully realized and is now in a sad state of disrepair. The time is ripe to change that, to rebuild this powerful place for continuous use by those who will make a difference to our everyday lives. With assistance from local and global supporters, the D.H. Lawrence Ranch could be rejuvenated and brought back to its rightful place as an important world cultural site. I think I first visited the Lawrence Ranch in 1978. I told a story about having been visited by Lawrence the night I stayed there. And I said he talked to me, and, uh, and uh, we had an interesting conversation. I don't think you can see it without being attracted to it. It's a very beautiful landscape and, and place. And given its history, then you get a really a great combination of points of interest. You mentioned Yaddo, and that's an obvious kind of um, connection. Place for writers. It could become a, a faculty retreat. It could become any number of things, you know. And it would appeal to all kinds of disciplines, I think. People in one or another field, it's a great place to work, to study and to work. So it has unlimited possibilities, I think. D.H. Lawrence lovers, you know, people who really admire his, his books. That history, for example, the ancient trails and Taos Pueblo people, their connection to it. And uh, so it's, a, it's not only a beautiful place, but it's a legitimate historical treasure. It's in a mystical place. It's unbelievable. And it's a shame that over the last decade, it has fallen into disrepair. My interests are trying to rebuild places such as the ranch for everyone to be able to have a place where they could go and explore their ideas and to exchange ideas. New Mexico could really be proud of its heritage through one of the most significant uh, places uh, in the state. My name is Sharon Ord Warner. I'm a professor of English at the University of New Mexico. I'm a novelist and a short story writer and a lifelong fan of D.H. Lawrence. In the 20 or so years since I came, I've been involved in writing grants on behalf of the ranch. I was involved in the National Historic Registry Proposal Project. So it's become a kind of a passion for me. In writing one of those grants, we sort of uh, looked at eight distinct eras. The first one being the pre-European era, when the ranch was traversed by Kiowa Indians who were extending their borders. And the trail that they used is still used today by the Taos Pueblo. As far as I know, the trail was used by the Taos people to go to their ceremonial places. And then, by extension, I guess it went into the plains. So, I don't know how much of it is, remains or is visible, but it should be preserved, certainly.
Captives were very important to the Kiowa people. My great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother was a captive from Mexico, taken when she was a girl. There was a lot of that going on. And so it could, could be that the Kiowas went into Taos to uh, buy people, mm -hmm. take people back with them to, you know, fill in for the losses they had suffered. The Spanish occupation era is the second era, and during that time, the Spanish occupied uh, that part of northern New Mexico until the 1680 revolt, um, at which time the Kiowa Indians in the Taos Pueblo became allies. I do know that uh, there was a lot of warfare between the Plains people and the Pueblos. The Pueblo of Pecos was destroyed partly by marauding Plains people and uh, there was a very active trade connection between the Plains people and Taos. Taos had a slave trade and uh, I don't know that the Kiowas were particularly interested in slaves but they were they were believed to have brought dried buffalo meat to the Pueblos in exchange for corn. So that was a lively trade. The third era is the U.S. territorial era when uh, promises of land and, and gold lured settlers, um, especially through the Homestead Act of 1862, and it brought on um, agriculture and also some farming to that particular property. The um, Southwest farming era was the next one and uh, during that period of time um, the, the, the actual uh, Lawrence cabin was built. It was called the Homesteaders Cabin and it was occupied by uh, the McClures who uh, were who were both farmers and ranchers because they had, they did, they grew alfalfa in the field that's still called the alfalfa field, and they also um, had a flock of as many as 500 goats, Ang white angora goats that roamed the property. The next era is the Utopian Arts era, and that's the point at which Mabel Dodge Lujan enters the picture. Um, she and Alice Corbin Henderson, who is the founder of Poetry Magazine, still a very large presence in, in uh, literature today, they were very successful in luring both visual artists, um, which became the Taos Society of the Arts, and literary figures to Taos, New Mexico, and also to Santa Fe. We wanted to go back to America in the spring and live at the ranch that Mabel Luhan had given me. She had taken me to the little ranch near Taos and I said, this is the loveliest place I've ever seen. And she told me, I give it to you. But Lawrence said, we can't accept such a present from anybody. I had a letter from my sister that very morning telling me that she had sent the manuscript of Sons and Lovers. So I told Lawrence, I will give Mabel the manuscript for the ranch. So I did. The sixth era of the ranch is the D.H. Lawrence and Frida Lawrence era, and that's when they occupied the ranch during a period of a total of 11 months, but over several different periods of time because they were always traveling back and forth. But they brought some of the important themes of the time to the ranch, including uh, tolerance of of racial differences and equal opportunities for women and they reinvigorated the ranch and brought art to it. Here on this little ranch under the Rocky Mountains, a big pine tree rises like a guardian spirit in front of the cabin where we live. The tree has its own aura of life. It is a great tree under which the house is built. And the tree is still within the allness of Pan. I have become conscious of the tree 
and of its interpenetration into my life. Long ago, the Indians must have been even more acutely conscious of it when they blazed it to leave their mark on it. The seventh era of the ranch began when, uh, after Lawrence's death, Frida Lawrence returned to the ranch with her new husband, Angelo Rivali. And um, at that point, interestingly, a number of the people that uh, had never, it, never been to the ranch, but that D.H. Lawrence would have loved to have there, came. They wanted to meet Mrs. Lawrence, and um, they were drawn to the property. And that among those people were uh, Leonard Bernstein, Lillian Gish, Tennessee Williams. Tennessee Williams, in fact, wanted to write a play about Lawrence, and so he lived in the little homesteader's cabin where Lawrence lived for several weeks trying to write this play, but he said Lawrence's ghost was too strong for him, and so he had to leave. The eighth era of the ranch is marked by D.H. Lawrence societies all around the world and also by annual international D.H. Lawrence conferences. The ranch is always important to all of those who are interested in D.H. Lawrence because it was the only property he and his wife ever owned. Only the fierce common desire to create a new kind of life, this was all that could make us truly meet. I only know that I felt the wonder of him always. Sometimes it overwhelmed me. It knocked out all my consciousness, as if a flame had burned me up. I remained in awe and wonder. I learned that a genius contains the whole gamut of human emotions from highest to lowest. I learned that a man must be himself, bad or good, at any price. When Frida Lawrence um, deeded the property to the university in 1956, she envisioned uh, it being used for recreational and educational events, and uh, she hoped that it would be a lively place. The Lawrence Ranch is now on the National Registry of Historic Places. Still, the place has um, not really been uh, used to its full potential. And uh, it's our hope that we can do something to change that. And I, I really believe that Frida and, and uh, David Herbert would uh, approve of it. We talk and make plans. Plans of coming back to the ranch and having places near one another. And perhaps having a sort of old school like the Greek philosophers. Talks in a garden, that is, under the pine trees. I feel I might perhaps get going with a few young people, building up a new unit of life out there making a new concept of life. Who knows? We have always talked of it. My being ill so long has made me realize perhaps I had better talk to the young and try to make a bit of a new thing with them and not bother much more about my own personal life. Perhaps now I should submit and be a teacher.